Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Pits of Mother K- Metal Chaos. This is your host, Dave. I got a nice special guest from Bourbon House. Singer Lacey Crow and uh, the guitarist Jason Clark. How are you guys doing tonight? We're doing good. Doing great. So give me a little history on this band. What's that? I said, can you guys give me a little history on the band? History on the band. So how's your following out in Wisconsin? You, Is there following out in Wisconsin? Yeah, you guys got a good I, good fan base? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, we have a little bit of a fan base uh, in Wisconsin. Our fans are kind of everywhere. Um, they just kind of spread out all over the world. Um, mostly right now, we're kind of, I don't know, we're gaining more um, every single day. So uh, every time we go out to to play shows, there's definitely more people that come to see us if we play, like, the same venue over and over again. Um, yeah, it's, it's growing. It's, it's, you know, kind of like a business. you got to just keep building everything up, right? So, so what, what part of Wisconsin are you guys from? Central Wisconsin. Mm, okay. So, how, how you guys been dealing with the heat this week? I hate the winter, so. <laughs> yeah, just think back to last winter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, are you guys doing any uh, outdoor concerts this summer? Yeah. Yeah, quite a few of them, actually. We're playing um, a festival in St. Cloud, Minnesota next month. And... Common Roots. Uh, Common Roots Festival. Also, Project Mayhem, which is one of Wisconsin's biggest rock concerts. It's up in Rhinelander on the 9th. Um, what else do we have? Outdoor stuff. The one in Stevens Point, the riverfront. Riverfront, Riverfest, something like that, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Staying busy. Yeah, we were in North Dakota. We did an outdoor show there. We have a lot of outdoor shows in the summer. It's just really, it's nice. You have to kind of rely on the weather, though, and hope it doesn't rain. Right. But, yeah. So how about as far as our indoor shows, what do you got coming up? Well, tomorrow night we are at Reptile Palace in Oshkosh. So that's over in the Fox Valley. Um, we're doing uh, I think we're, so, <laughs> we have to like look at our calendars because we're, we're playing so much. Um we're playing out in Anawa. There's like a 10th anniversary um, party coming up on the 10th. 20th anniversary on the 10th. Sorry. Yeah. Um, Little Rock Bar in Anawa. So that's going to be a fairly big event. It's a kind of a small town. It's a, even a town. It's kind of a ghost town, actually. But hmm. it's a small bar, of course. But they're having a big outdoor party for their anniversary. So. I think that's going to be a pretty big event. And then um, Bad Heads in Green Bay is also coming up next month. The cold Shot. We're playing the Cold Shot next month as well in Appleton. Yeah. So there's all kinds of things coming up. You can check out our website, bourbonhouserock.com. Also our Facebook page has updates. Yeah. Now, are you guys working on any uh, new recordings? Absolutely. Yeah, we just booked uh, Secret Time a couple days ago for um, four more songs this fall. We've already recorded uh, a few as well that are on release. Um, so we'll have enough for an album. We should absolutely at the end of um, September, I think. <clears throat> so how many songs would you guys be looking at putting on the next album? Probably about eight or nine. So now, who are the other band members? Uh, Ryan Sargent is our 
drummer. Right now we're working with, um, our bassist is Eric Chicote. I can't say his last name very well. <laughs> we just call him Chic. He's known as Chic. Yeah. He's sort of a utility man in this area. He uh, plays several instruments. He's been in dozens of bands. And, and we needed help for the North Dakota shows. And he was happy to do it. And he's been with us since then. He's done um, four more shows. And it uh, sounds like he'll be doing at least four or five more. So um, at the moment, he's our bass player, and um, that's the band, the four of us right now. All right. So now, Lacey, let, give me a history on your uh, singing. How, how long have you been uh, singing for? How many years? Um, well, I haven't <laughs> really been singing um, out, like, in a band or anything before this. Um I was very much so just like a campfire, campfire singer, I would say, um, before that. So I don't have too much history um, being in a band before this one at all. So it's your first band? Yep. So for vocalists, we, uh, did you take any lessons or you're just uh, born, self-taught, whatever? I didn't take any lessons. I have a very musical family. Everybody in my family uh, sings, plays guitar. Um, I think I, I basically, I'm not going to say I taught myself, but, you know, my, my heroes and my inspirations basically taught me just from singing them over and over again. I always kind of credit Chris Cornell as being my, my vocal coach because I feel like he's probably helped me the most with his range. So Chris Cornell is like your biggest uh, inspiration vocal-wise? I would say so, yeah. I, and obviously I don't sound like Chris Cornell or anything. Right, but like, right. But yeah, he inspired me the most. So do you play any instruments? I play guitar not very well. Well, J- Jason, can, I, I Jason can help you out on that. <laughs> So now, Jason, how about how, how about you? How long you been playing guitars for? Uh, I've been playing guitar for quite a while since um, you know since high school, and um, just it's pretty much been my main focus, you know. Now, prior to this band, Bourbon House, have you played in any other bands? Um, yeah, I was in some cover bands. Each cover band kind of had a few originals, so we always tried to take a step in that direction. And some of them had five or six originals, and um, some of them even recorded a little bit, but um, not like this. I always wanted to be in a band that was exclusively original and um, really serious about it, just to see how far we could take it, you know. So now, did you take guitar lessons, or were you self-taught? Um, I would say I'm self-taught as well. I never really, I never took a formal lesson. I never paid for a lesson anyway. Um, I had friends who played guitar, and if I had questions, I'd ask them. Um, but that's about the only lessons I took. Mainly, I tried to figure things out for myself. For myself, I studied a lot on my own and read a lot of guitar books and instructional books. So who, yeah, you. so who are your guitar heroes? Guitar heroes, Jimmy Page and um, Richie Blackmore from Deep Purple, Zach Wilde, Dave Mustaine. Um, I have, there's too many to mention, really. When I think of, the more I think about it, the more I realize that uh, dozens of people have influenced me. But really, I I would have to give me page credit for making me become serious about it because when I got my first guitar all I wanted to do was learn all the up on riffs, you know. Right. Man, it sucks that Dave Mustaine has throat cancer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, oh, I think he'll pull through it. But he's he's in the studio making working on a new album he's he's a fighter. <laughs> yeah, he was, uh, absolutely. Well they said he wouldn't play after that accident when he had all his nerve damage and couldn't move his hands for months. And uh, 
came right back and got as good as he was before, if not better. Yeah, well, they say he's got a 90, 90% chance of, you know, beating this one. So now, how how the band uh, band name Bourbon House how did that come about? Uh, well, we kind of we started off as just an acoustic band before we even decided to write originals or or anything. Um, and what we were doing was a lot of Delta Blues. We did a lot of like Elmore James and Muddy Waters and stuff. Um, so we wanted something that sounded bluesy. To, to exemplify that, and it kind of just took around, and uh, I don't know. I, I think it still fits with with our sound. So yeah, uh, we wanted a word that makes people think about the blues, and maybe Southern Delta blues. Mm-hmm. Um, so the word barrel house, I always thought was a cool word. Um, you know, they always say that Paul McCartney plays barrel house style piano on certain songs. I'm like, that's a cool word. i got to keep that in mind. Mm-hmm. So we thought about using that, but then we thought, well, if we can incorporate bourbon or alcohol we, we, we into we it. We in somewhere. Come on. It's rock yeah. music, so. We thought if we changed uh-huh. it to bourbon house, that would be uh, a cool phrase that would make people wonder, but then we realized that there's actually a famous restaurant called bourbon house. <laughs> so we kind of regret using it, but. They're just going to have to change their name, that's all I mean. Yeah, they're going to have to change theirs, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So now you you guys, well, you can classify yourself as like a blues band with a hard rock edge? Right. I would probably say the other way around. Yeah, the other way around. Yeah. More like a hard rock band with some blues influence. You know, yeah. Like Aerosmith. Black Crows. Aerosmith, that kind Black of. Crows. Um, Doug Zeppelin. Deep Purple. And, yeah. You know, there's hundreds of bands that are blues-based, hard rock bands. So uh, all those bands you just mentioned, those are like big inspirations for Bourbon House? Definitely, yeah. yeah. So now, what, uh, what was the last show you guys played at? Show um, at the office. How'd that go? That was really fun. It was really good. You you said that was outdoor show, right? Lacey. That was an outdoor show, yeah. Oh. Yeah, it was outdoors, and it was um, we had really good weather, and it's kind of weird around here in central Wisconsin because so many people go somewhere for the weekend. To go up north, camping or fishing or something like Monaco, Tomahawk, River, or else to go in something a little more adventurous like Door County. They might go look at the wineries or something, or maybe they'll go to the water parks in Wisconsin Dells, you know. So a lot of smaller towns really clear out on weekends. So it's kind of a challenge for bands when you book a show and you're not in, say, Milwaukee. Um, we might be playing for 10 or 12 people, but we were lucky. We had a good crowd that day, so. Mm-hmm. We don't play a uh, Waka very much, especially in the, in the summertime because of that, but, or any of the small towns. Now, have you guys opened for any national acts yet? We have not. Working on that. So what, what bands would you guys love to share the stage with? Um, it's weird how these things happen, 
know, because it's done by promoters and sometimes the venue owners, so you don't really have much control over it. They're just, they just ask you, do you want yeah. to do this, do you not want to do it? And it, they don't really care if it's an established act or a newer act, and or even if your music goes with the uh, music of the other band a lot of times. So, um, something that we don't have much control over, and then we don't have any large music venues in central Wisconsin anyway. So it's a little bit, a little more challenging for us. So what are some of your favorite venues venues to play at so far? I kind of like the, the little venues, actually. Those have been my, my favorite ones. The one that we're playing tomorrow, our Reptile Palace, is really fun. Uh, every time we play there, that would probably be my favorite right now. Mm-hmm. It's really small. Like, it's just like a little tiny place, but it's, it's all about the people, yeah. you know, and the people who go there are super fun. Yeah, it holds maybe a hundred people, mm-hmm. and uh, but there a hundred rowdy people are better than five hundred people who are right, you know, not paying attention. So that's a really good, a really fun venue to play. Um, the fellows in Marshfield can be a good time too. Mm-hmm. So. The Red Hills and Stevens Point was really fun. We put there as well. Yep. Yeah. So now with a year and a half this band's been going, what's been, for both of you, what's been your fondest memory of being in this band so far? Now, for both of you, do you have a most embarrassing moment being in this band so far? Most embarrassing moment? Oh, my God. Well, I can think of a moment in Minnesota that was pretty embarrassing. For me, I guess I can't go any further than that. I don't want to get into details of it. But... Well, there was a, a time when your, um, your pedal... It, like crapped out basically during the show and it made like the weirdest noise. Yeah, that's happened. I still haven't fallen off the stage. I haven't fallen down no. or done anything yet. Um, so that's pretty well, well, if you stay relatively <laughs> sober, you know, that shouldn't happen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, I mean, I've definitely like messed up the words to my own songs, but it, you know, it, it hasn't really affected me as far as embarrassing me at this point, yeah, because other people don't know, don't know the words anyway, but uh, that would be embarrassing if people did. Yeah, I think you get a little bit immune to embarrassment, too, as time goes on and you get deeper into this career that we're pursuing, because we're always exposing ourselves not in that kind of way. 
way, but, <laughs> you know, by putting things on YouTube and Instagram and we're always doing things uh, uh, publicly and... There's always haters, you know. There's trolls all over the place, especially online, you know. And so people say who she's saying and you got to delete them or whatever. You know, maybe in the beginning it's a little embarrassing, but just get used to it. You know, like, well, it's part of the... Uh, it shows, so yeah. yeah, if you're going to put yourself out there, you have to expect that, for sure. And you can't let it um, break you down. You get a laugh and off and just move on. Yeah. Don't think about it too much. So now your latest uh, music video is Devil on My Heels? Yeah. Yes, it is. So you guys want to talk about that video a little bit? Like, sure. Like, so how, how long did it take to make that video? <laughs> And uh, we worked with a, a really good videographer. Um, his name's Alex Grant. And maybe it took him like two weeks or so to yeah. get it finalized. Yeah, he spent a few weeks on editing, you know, but it was a bunch of us kind of thing. It was one of those where we all just showed up. But actually, the, there was a the sequence with the other dancers was filmed a week later. Yeah, that was separate. They had their thing, but, you know, just the band spent the day in front of the green screen and uh, doing the sequence in the um, interrogation room and did a lot of screwing around that day. We were in, you know, a university building and we were pushing each other around in wheelchairs and that sort of thing. It was fun. Yeah, it was a a really good time. So, yeah, we got it all done in a day and... um, like what you said, Alex is great. He's all business, and he makes sure that everybody stays on task, and he's got it all done, and he polishes it up quickly, and yeah, not a problem. Look at these Awesome. So now, who writes all the lyrics for the band? I write the lyrics uh, right now. We have our, our drummer is um, writing some songs for this next album, so, so he'll be contributing more that way. Um, yeah, but me, me mostly. So where, where do you get your inspirational inspiration from to write the songs for the band? Um, for anything and everything, um, past experiences, fears, um, dreams can come from from anywhere sometimes it comes from literally nothing it comes from just like uh, a sentence that i'm hearing in my head maybe you know um yeah for devil on my field i don't know what should i write a song about and i said write a song about the devil rock and roll for you you know so she right. just said okay i gotta gotta say something about the devil and that's just kind of the seed where things begin and then you just start to brainstorm and write down things and cross out things and eventually everything comes together yeah so now, who writes all the music for the band? Uh, so far, I'm writing the chords and the chord progressions and basically writing the music. I'm fine with that. I sit around jamming all day long. I, I honestly write 10 or 12 songs a day. Yeah. It's just a matter of if someone sort of singing along with something. If they did, you got a song. If they don't, it just figures and gets forgotten. <laughs> So now your last, uh, your last, go, go ahead. What were you saying, Lacey? Oh, I said Jason could have a solo career with the amount he writes, for sure. So now you, you guys last, uh, audio outing, um, where was that recorded at? Oh, we recorded Pine Hollow audio in Eau Claire with, uh, our friend Kevin Middlesworth. Uh, he's a friend now. We didn't know him until we started working with him, but um, he's a great engineer, um, owns and operates the studio out in Eau and um, he's a really good uh, co-producer for us, comes up with some good ideas. Uh, that false ending at the end of Devil on My Heels was actually his idea. Uh, we recorded the song, and he said, the only thing I can think of that would make this song cooler is that you have a default ending where it seems like you're going to stop and then it just kicks in again. So yeah, that was him. I mean, he has a lot of great ideas like that and he helps out a lot with um, the 
guitar tones and kind of my guitar tech too. So yeah, yeah, he's it's where cool it's all dude. done, and everything we've recorded is with him, and our upcoming recording will be with him as well. So, how long was the recording process for the last CD? Last CD was really rushed. Actually, we we only had a couple of days to do it, so yeah, it was a weird situation. We did it in three days total. Yeah. That's why it was called Wild Abandoned. We yeah. had to go in there and basically do everything on the first take. Yeah. We had to record eight songs in like two or three days. Um, yeah, we did. We really had to squeeze in that uh, time. Mm-hmm. So there wasn't a whole lot of experimenting. We wish we could have polished things up a little more on some sets, but this is what it is. And um, we just figured we would... Really raw album. Yeah, we would just um, be proud of it and say... You know, it was one of those albums where you went in and you just knocked the songs out, kind of on the first take, jammed it live, and there you go. That's kind of how it is. There's you know, obviously some overdubbing and things like that, but it was really kind of a wild abandoned approach, that album. Mm-hmm. But in general, a song a day is the rule. And that goes for, you know, whether you're working with a top producer or whomever, just quote a song a day. So now, in the, in the next five years, where do you guys hope to see Bourbon all set? Five years from now? Well, things are moving so so quickly really now that in hard, five years? Really hard. Damn. Yeah, I like to be selling out arenas. <laughs> yeah, okay. I, I try not to think ahead more than about a week. And if I have to think ahead further than that, I'll think ahead maybe a year. But beyond a year, you have no idea where you're like. Yeah. Because if I think much. back five years, I mean. You wouldn't have said you're where you are now. I that. never would have predicted that I'd be where I am now. And, uh, you know, in 10 years, your life just becomes a different life. So I try not to aim things in a, I try to aim in a certain direction, but I try not to predict it. Or that, you know, force mm-hmm. things to happen. Yeah, exactly. But, I guess, for a more concrete answer, we want to be on tour, promoting ourselves, or perhaps um, along with another band that's more established. All right, well, I know you guys are still a fairly new band, but um, what kind of musical advice would you give to upcoming bands? that I would I would say to people and I feel like right now it might seem um, like we are following a trend but it's really just great timing um, for, for us I think there's a lot of like retro like classic rock um, inspired bands that are really kind of getting more recognition now than than they used to um, but that's what we've always been writing so right now is the perfect time and I think that's why we're getting the attention that we're getting right now, and that's really great. But it's only the only reason our songs um, are coming out the way they are, uh, I think they're good anyway, <laughs> um, is because we're just following our heart with it. Like, we're just doing, we're just trying to write good songs, songs that we would want to listen to. So just, just write what you want to write. And yeah to make the kind of music that you really want to make, the kind that makes you happy, and then seek out and connect with people who like it. Right, because there's there's people who like every kind of music. It doesn't matter when when you come out. I mean, you could, people could write things that are like weird techno pop right now, and they will find fans. The fans are out there. I don't think there's really any genre that's you know, dominating genre right now. If you go on Spotify and look at all the things that people are listening to, they're listening to anything and everything. And they're even bringing back music from decades ago because you can You can listen to anything you want, anytime you want. It was you know, it's not like the 80s and 90s where people were listening to the radio trying to figure yeah. out what, what's cool and what should I like. Tell me what I should be listening to. You can just go online and listen to anything you want. You can and discover your own music mm-hmm. on your own 
And so there's really no trend anymore. I know there's trends in there's trends the radio well. stations yeah. that have trends that they try to follow, and, you know, but that's because they're kind of at the mercy, mercy of uh, you know, record companies that are influencing them to play certain things, but... Yeah. But with all the other avenues, radio isn't your your only option, basically, to, to reach people is what I'm trying to say. So Yeah. Yeah. You don't need to make trendy music. Um, and and don't quit. I think that's another thing I would say. I think that that's probably the biggest downfall that any indie band who's trying to make it in any kind of any kind of way. Um they, they stop. They quit for whatever reason. Maybe people leave the band. Um, whatever. Whatever they're doing. Oh, keep releasing music. Um, keep trying to find your fans. Keep going. Yeah, keep know. writing, recording. Big recordings of good songs. Mm-hmm. And as long as you're putting something out on a regular basis, you don't stop. Yeah. Um, you're bound to go upward. Yeah. I mean, we've had, like, dozens of lineup changes. Yeah. And, they, you know, the band keeps going because me, Jason, and now Ryan um, are the top of the band. So it doesn't matter who else. If, if they're in or if they're out, it's kind of just like, we're just going gonna to keep going. So just so you know, that's, I mean, dozens of lineup changes. Yeah. It's that does mm-hmm. kind of how I think of it. And if you want to be on the train... That's cool. I hope you get along with everybody. You don't get kicked <laughs> off, you know. But if uh, you don't want to be on the train, you can get off and it's all fine. We'll still be friends, but trains are going to keep going. So just kind of how I think of it. We don't want to stop. It's what we love to do. We're just going to keep on doing it. And I think that as long as we keep doing it, things will keep going in the right direction. Now, what do you guys think of... Uh club promoters that do pay-to-play concerts? No. Don't do that. No, thanks. That's stupid. I don't think anybody should pay-to-play anywhere. I don't care how big the crowd is. That's dumb. <laughs> yeah. If you want my, you know, my humble opinion. <laughs> that doesn't happen around here very much, but in larger cities um, where there's some great venues and there's thousands of bands and all the bands want to play there, it's then you know that there's a supply and demand dynamic that's going on and it's in their favor. They're like, okay, well, if 200 bands want to play here, who wants to pay the most to play here? It's yeah. kind of ridiculous. And it, you know, the best bands in the area should be playing there, really. Nobody should have to. You should have to pay to play anywhere. What's the point of it? Just for bragging rights that you played there? I mean, that, I don't know. Maybe, maybe we don't live in an area where it makes any sense to us, but the, the band that we talked to that have done it said that uh, it didn't make sense to them and they regret doing it. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to ask you guys a couple fun questions here. You guys ready for a couple fun questions? Sure. Fun questions, sure. Okay, for both of you, what's your favorite food to eat? Food to eat? Yeah, favorite food. I'm uh, I really like Thai food. Any kind of Thai food, I eat a lot of sushi. Um, and like squid and seafood and stuff. Is it any kind of food or can it be junk food? <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. You want to do junk food? Go ahead. Yeah. It's an ice cream, of course. <laughs> They're the best foods on earth. Everyone knows that, right? <laughs> um, so now, like a main. So what? What's your favorite main dish, Jason? Yeah, you're in a seafood yeah, diet. Seafood diet. You seafood, food, you eat it. If I see it, I eat it. I don't care. Uh, I eat a lot of fruits and vegetables, but I also eat quite a bit of junk food. So I don't care. I just um, <laughs> I figure as long as I'm eating enough fruits and vegetables, I can eat pretty much whatever I want. So far, it's worked out pretty well for me. Yeah, I get to um, eat pretty healthy. I, I'm fairly health conscious. I mean, I don't deny myself something. Like, if I want a bowl of ice cream, I just have it. But I do eat fruits and vegetables every day. But I'll also go to a buffet and kind of stuff myself once or twice a month. <laughs> you know, I've cut down on that. I used to do that a couple times a week. Now I only do it once or twice a month. So. He has dream 
dreams about going to buffet. Oh, I, so. I dream about food every night. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So now, what's uh, both of your favorite beverage to drink? So how about as far as a non-alcoholic drink, what's your favorite drinks? We like coffee. Coffee, yeah. We like coffee. Um, I like pretty much all of them. I like coffee and tea and herbal and um, rhubarb tea and ginger tea and <laughs> beverages that a lot of people might have never heard of. Like, um, I even like Kool-Aid and I like soda and I like water. <laughs> He's doing that thing again where something's in front of him and he'll, he will eat it or drink it. So. I, don't, I don't care. I don't, yeah. If it's not going to kill me right now, I'm just going to eat it. <laughs> hey, what, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger, right, Jason? Yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> so far, so good. All right, so both of you, what's your top three favorite bands? Of ever? Oh. Yeah, li Lifetime, yeah. Go ahead. Okay, now do you do you guys have a website for the band? Yep, bourbonhouserocks.com. Now do you guys keep that updated with shows and all that good stuff? Yeah, we got that. Um, it's probably. I mean, there's more updates um, and news and stuff on our Facebook page for sure, and that's Bourbon House Official on Facebook. Um. And then we're pretty active on Twitter as well. And that's Bourbon House underscore. All right. So now the the song uh, that we were talking about, the video, the Devil on My Heels, what is this song about? Well, the song is about um, somebody who's um, maybe in uh, a bad situation and it can be it can be anything it could be you know grievance or and they're they're in a bad relationship or whatever and they're just like not dealing with it in the correct way and i think that a lot of us sometimes will look back on things on the way we've reacted um or the way we handled some kind of heartache or whatever and be like i wish i had done that differently you know so it's it's that, basically. Awesome. Well, I want to thank both of you for taking time tonight to, to do this interview. And uh, you guys have any final words or thank yous or anything you want to give up before we close? Yeah, I mean, well, thank you to you. Um, thank you to everybody who is who has supported us. And, you know, our, our fans are so awesome. Like, we won, that, we won that poll, and that was really shocking to us, but also... It's really exciting uh, that Classic Rock magazine poll. Um, so thank you to to all of our fans out there, and, and um, yeah, I thanks to all the new people who are listening to this podcast and yeah. checking us out on social media, maybe following the band, listening to us on Spotify, or whatever you want to do. Thanks a lot, and welcome aboard. Yeah. 
Awesome. Well, thanks again, guys. We're going to close out the show with the song, Devil on My Heels. You guys have a great night. You thanks. You too. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye.